Son, to the glory of that same Son, He's worthy. Whereof we're so glad and we're thankful. Amen. Truly, God is good. And we love Him on today. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in the Lord. Amen. Truly, God is victorious. The Lord Jesus Christ is indeed victorious. It's so, such a delight to see everyone on this morning. Amen. Truly, God is good. Amen. From everlasting to everlasting, He is worthy of all that we can offer Him. Amen. Bow your heads with me in a word of prayer, Father God. We come before you now in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus, asking you to open our understanding, open our eyes, that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. For we are strangers in the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. Hide not your commandments from us. In the name that is above every name, in Jesus' name, we thank you now, Lord God. Amen. And amen. Truly God is good. You got your Bible. Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 27. Amen. Matthew chapter 27. And we want to look at some things here. Amen. And see what God has done on our behalf. We want to start at verse 52. We're going to start at verse 51, actually. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is awesome. Amen. He's worthy. Amen. 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 How about flip that around for me? Amen. Truly, God is good. And we just praise him and thank him again. Amen for his wondrous, amen, grace. Is he wonderful on today? Yes. Is he worthy of all the praises on today? Yes. From the rising of the sun to the going of that same sun, is he worthy? Yes. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. And again, we have reasons, amen, to rejoice. Amen. Around the world, for the most part, this is known as Resurrection Sunday. Amen. This is the first day of the week. Amen. The Lord's day, the Bible describes it as, as being. Amen. After three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, in the heart of the grave, amen, he carried our sins down. Amen. And I'm so glad for uh, Hebrews chapter, amen, 8 verse 12. I will be merciful unto the unrighteousness and the iniquities will I remember no more. Amen. How many is glad to know that he's merciful unto your unrighteousness? He had pity on your unrighteousness. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter, uh, what was that? 27. He was merciful unto your unrighteousness. Amen. In our unrighteousness, he still had mercy. I'm so glad to know the Lord had mercy on me. Amen. When I was out in the world doing my own thing, doing what I thought was good, I was big enough to do. Even though, even though I was young, under 13, under 14, amen, under 10, doing what I thought I was big enough to do, God had mercy on, on me. I'm so glad that the Lord had mercy on me. Amen. amen. So again, around the world, we celebrated what is known as Resurrection Sunday. And in some circles, unfortunately, uh, I know the Catholic Church perhaps meant well, but they, uh, when that when that Roman emperor, Constantine, Constantine, conquered the known world at that time, all the Roman Empire, every pagan religion, every pagan ideology at that time, if Rome had conquered them, Rome brought them over into the faith of Christianity. In other words, Rome said, you are all Christianized. Just by the strike of my hand, regardless of what religion you are part of, not denomination, but what, regardless of what religion you are part of, you are now a Christian. Amen. 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 Whether you're jumping off a broom into a lake, whether you're, whether you're trying to fly on a broom or whether you're laying the Easter bunny egg and, egg and bunnies don't lay eggs. Amen. He said you are a Christian. Whether you're bobbing for apples, whether you're a voodoo worshiper, as long as you're part of the Roman Empire, he said you are now a Christian. Let me say that again. So that when the Constantine or Constantine, whatever his name was, he saw this sign in the sky. It was a cross with a loop on it and it's an, it's an Egyptian Goddess worship sign, uh, the Egyptian Ankh, amen. And he saw that sign say, in this sign, conquer. And he took it unto himself that God was speaking to him by the way of the cross, amen. He thought God was speaking to him by the way of the cross. And he thought he was looking at the sign of the cross of Jesus Christ, the sign of Christianity. So he took onto that sign and he went on and won the victory. So he became known, in so many words, the first Pope. I know some said Peter was the first pope, but Peter was an apostle of Jesus, which is called Christ. Hello, somebody. Peter, Peter, listen, Peter did not involve himself in Catholicism. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. Peter did not involve himself with the spirit or with Catholicism. Peter was not a Catholic. Amen. Peter was an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, better known as in our day and time a Christian. Hello, somebody. 
And listen, it's important that the truth be made known. The Bible said in St. John 17, verse 17, and ye shall know the truth. Not that one. He said, he said um, sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Why? Because thy word is truth. St. John 17, 17. And I think it's picked up in Acts, no, no, uh, John 8 and 44. It's Acts 8, 32, I think it is. Somewhere there. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you, come on, say free. 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 Hallelujah. So I think that was John 8, 32. Let me just verify that for sure. Amen. You shall know the truth. Yeah, that's what it is. John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth. You shall, you, you shall what the truth? Shall you shall know the truth. How are you going to know the truth? What is the truth? The hallelujah. One man said, Jesus, he asked Jesus, what is truth? And Jesus said, listen, I, in other words, I am the truth, the way and the life. You shall know Jesus, and Jesus shall make you free. Amen? Amen. So Matthew chapter 27 again, verse 50, 51. Hallelujah. And behold the veil of the temple, my God, was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Now this was a spectacular day for believers, especially for those who had already died and was in Abraham's bosom, Awaiting the resurrection, awaiting the coming back from the dead, or back from among the dead of the Lord Jesus Christ. The rocks ran. Let's look at this first half again. And behold, and look, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. What is significant about that? What's significant about the veil of the temple is that this veil covered the holy place from the holies of holies. It was a gateway, it was a doorway from the holy place to the holies of holies. The holies of holies where God presented himself to the people. He presented himself to the high priest. Once a year, the high priest would go to the holies of holies, carrying blood for his own sacrifice, his own sin, and for the sins of the people. Hallelujah. Some call that atonement or at one minute. That's when the people came back together with God. All of the nation's sin was washed in the blood but what can wash away my sins, as you know? Nothing but the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first prophecy God gave in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, talks about the seed of the woman that was going to come and bruise the head of the serpent. And Jesus was the seed of that woman, Mary, who came forth in that Calvary cross, defeated, destroyed the work of the enemy. Hallelujah. My God, but he did much more than that. And I'm excited about what he did. Now, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that same power lived in the life of every believer. Now, God is not excited just to see us, amen, saved. That's wonderful. But he wants to see us walking in authority and his power, amen? Hallelujah. Not just, kind of, not just any kind of power, but the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, a power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen? Amen. Woo! My God, my God. Let's look at verse 51 again. And behold, he said, look, something, something mystical has happened. Something miraculous has happened. Listen, it, it, it scares me to think about it. What happened, man? Listen, to look at the veil. The holies of holies has been exposed. What's in the holies of holies has been made known. In other words, God is telling the believer, come on in. Come, I'm not just talking to the high priest, but I'm asking you all to come in as often as you want to. Come on in. Amen? Amen. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent. rent. Now listen, it listen, the stones didn't tear it, but God himself took a hold to the veil of the temple, took it a hold, and poured it upon himself signifying the way to him has been made open and you don't, have to, you don't have to come just once a year anymore. You can come and stay like Joshua did there in the book of Exodus 33 and 12, amen? That's what you can do. God has made himself so available. Listen, friend, if you got some people in your life who want you more than they want God, separate yourself from those people. Did you hear that? If you got people in your life who want you more than they want God, separate yourself from those people. Amen. Amen. 
If they're not chasing after God, if they're chasing after you, not chasing after God, you need to get away from those folks. Do I have one witness? Amen. Hallelujah. So behold, the fill of the temple was written in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks broke or rent in half. Verse 52. And the graves were open. You see that? And the graves were open. So now watch what happened. Now here comes Jesus. On the, on the crucifixion day, the veil was rent in half. Or what? Or what's this on the third day? You are coming out of the grave. Verse, verse uh, 52. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Their body, now, they're, they're, they were conscious where they were. Acts, uh, Luke, 4, Luke 16, verse 19. They was conversing down there. They were conscious, but their bodies were asleep. Amen. I know some some people teach there in the book of Ecclesiastes nine and five. A living, uh, basically, the dead knows nothing. The living know they're going to die, but the dead have no more conscience, no more reward. They don't know they, they don't know anything. But the dead spirit and soul, which is not dead, they are fully aware of what's going to happen. The physical body doesn't know anything, but the spirit and the soul of man is is is, is immortal, and it is going to live in conscious awareness forever. Let me say that again. Hallelujah. Jesus did not go down there to get dead, folks. When Jesus died and rose again, he didn't die and rise again to get dead, folks. God bless the woman of God. He didn't die and rise again to get dead, folks. He went down to get those who were looking for his return. Hello. He went down to get living folks. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Abel, and all the other ones who were looking to his coming. Get up one of the king, the real Bibles. Hallelujah! My God, my God, my God, my God. Is God wonderful or is God wonderful? I said, get up one of the real Bibles. Amen? Because our Bibles are not real Bibles. Hello, somebody. Amen? Hallelujah! All Bibles are not real Bibles. Amen? So, so God is good. God is good. Listen, 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 listen. So Jesus, he didn't, he didn't die for the dead. He died for the living. He didn't go down there to get the dead. He went down there to get the living. Where were the living? There was an Abraham bosom. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 52. Matthew 52. No, no, Matthew 27, 52. He didn't go down to get the dead. He went down to get the living. My God, my God. One day the Bible lets us know in the book of, the book of Daniel, the last few verses. He, oh, my God. Let's look at Daniel. Let's look at Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12 in the Old Testament. Look at the table of contents. Amen. Feel free to do that. Who glory to God. Jesus. My God. Phew. Let's look at verse 2. And many, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Woo! Glory. I'm so glad for this message this morning. God, deliver me. Oh God. I'm so glad for this message this morning. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So you are. Your brother Charlie in church Bible. And you get church Bible too. So you know what page number. That's church Bible? Yeah, you gave me one. Amen. Don't get, get one so you know what page number we are. It's 12 what now? Okay, Daniel 12, verse 2. Oh, Daniel? That's why I guarded so much for when you gave me a sign. Amen. 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 Daniel 12, verse 2. Will you get it? Tell me what page number we are. We're, uh, 144. <clears throat> well, Daniel, we're on page uh, 979. 979? And, and Matthew 1076. Okay, Daniel, where are we on Daniel? What's Daniel again? 979. 979? Yeah. All right, page over. 979, chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Now, notice he said many, not all. Because some ain't going to come back out of the dust of the earth until the end of all things. Revelation chapter 20. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. There's going to be two general resurrections. And we will be in one of those resurrections. Those who are saved and those who are sanctified will be in the first resurrection. But those who are not saved will not have part in the first resurrection. Those who got sin in their life will not be in part of the first resurrection. Those who are still lying and adulterating and fornicating and committing adultery, all those kind of sin, any kind of sin, don't like nobody, don't you hate everybody. You just, listen, you're going to be in part, you're going to be in the second resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that got part in the first resurrection. Let's look at Daniel chapter 12 again, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall what? Awake. Awake. 
Some to what? Everlasting, Everlasting what? Life. And some to what? Shame. How long is it? Everlasting. And contempt. Is this really going to happen? Yes. This really going to happen, friend. There are those right now who are who are in hell, burning right now. I know some people say, well, nobody in hell, but the Bible is too clear about that matter. Uh, amen. The book of Luke, chapter 16, and verse 19, and there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a beggar by, a, a beggar by the name of Lazarus who was led at the rich man's gates, full of sores, devour, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell, fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, it came to pass that the dog came to lick the sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being where? In torment. Hello, somebody. And he sent Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he said, Father Abraham, he was a Jew. He said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and do what? Cool my tongue. Why? Because I'm tormented in these flames. Hello? Some folk will, some folk will say, well, there's no torment in the hell right now. For you don't believe that. If Jesus said there was a certain rich man, you better believe that there was a certain rich man. My God. Hello, somebody. See, one of, one of the, there's something about God that's going to cause some folks to be saved. And that same thing that's about God will cause some other folks to be lost. What is it? It is the goodness and the kindness of God. Some folks are going to see the goodness and kindness of God and say, Lord, thank you. Please forgive me. And they're going to run from their sins and run to God. Other folk will say, well, God won't let me go to hell because of his goodness and kindness. My God, my God. And they're going to go to that place called hell. It's just like a very kind and wonderful mother. She tell her child, I'm going to spank you if you do that again. I'm going to say, but mama, you love me. I know I love you, but I'm going to spank you if you do it again. But mama, you ain't going to spank me because you love me. I spank you because I love you. God said he chastised those whom he loved. Amen. So watch this now. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Shall do what? They're going to awake. They're going to open their eyes. Hallelujah. They're going to awake. They're going to come to themselves. They're going to realize that, listen, something is up. What's going on? I thought I was dead. I thought it was all over. My God, my God. How many precious souls around the world almost every every holiday they think about mama uh, they think about daddy and some of these precious souls put a gun to their head and take their own life. I just want the pain to stop. I just want the pain to stop. I just want the pain to stop. And guess what they do? They put a bullet in their head. They take a lot of pills and kill themselves. They cut the wrist. They, they overdose on something. And then they go into a coma. They don't, feel like, they don't feel in the pain while they're in the coma. But once they breathe their last breath, friend, their soul and spirit leave their body and go straight to a place called hell and they realize the pain will never stop. The Bible says the devil, the devil, come on, say the devil. He's a deceiver. And the devil that deceives them, Revelation 20 verse 10. And the devil that deceives them. He's a master deceiver. There's no deceiver greater than that deceiver. If you, if, you, if you got a conversation going on with the devil, chances are you're going to lose unless you stop the conversation. Hello? Hallelujah! You know what the Lord began to share with me? This is what the Lord began to share with me earlier today. You got to watch it. You got to watch it. Watch out for manipulation. Hear me what I say? What did I say? Watch out for manipulation. Watch out for manipulation. Watch out for people who are out for their own selves. You know, you know, you know, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be able, you got to be able for your own salvation, the world that we're living in, to know how to say no. Amen? Hello? Because we got a resurrection date. We got a resurrection date that is, that is fastly approaching us. That is what? Fastly approaching us. And before long, it's gonna be upon us. My God! And before long, that resurrection day is going to be what? Upon us. So let me get to share with you again. He said, listen, a person who can practice manipulation is practicing of a spirit of what? 
Witchcraft. Why you say that? So it's the spirit of the devil. If you follow, if you follow the manipulative spirit, you're following the who? Devil. You're following the devil. We need to examine ourselves. See, I often examine myself. There was a time when I used to feel condemned. I used to feel condemned. I used to feel convicted. I didn't know why. I said, why am I feeling condemned? I used to examine myself. Why am I feeling this way, Lord? And if the Lord showed me why I was feeling that way, if it was something I did wrong, I said, thank you, Lord. I will repent of it. Forgive me, God. Forgive me for that. But if he, he and I said, Lord, why, why am I feeling this way? If he didn't show me any particular reason as to why I was feeling that way, then I realized it was the devil who was trying to pull one of his tricks over me. And when I realized it was the devil, I, re I began to rebuke the devil, and he was free from me. You hear what I'm saying? So that's how we got to do. The enemy, he, he, the enemy doesn't himself come necessarily to harass you. He comes in the form of people, situations, ideas, things. You see what he come? Well, for example, the, the, uh, the, the, the spirit of control, the spirit of witchcraft, or, let's say the spirit of a pimp. The spirit of a pimp ain't going to go to the girl. And the spirit itself ain't going to go, hey, walk the streets for me. No, the spirit ain't going to do it. But the spirit will in enter a man or into a woman and use that woman as a, vis uh, as a vessel or, or, another, or, or, or as a medium. And that person will go being manipulated by that spirit to ask that person to walk the street for them. And you think it's the person. As you know, friend, it ain't the person. It's the spirit that is in the person, which is of Satan. Hello? So guess what you got to do to certain people in situations? situation? Pull away. Not because you don't love the person, but they don't have control over their own situation. Do what? Come on, say, pull away. Pull away. All right. Y'all listen. Y'all didn't ask me right that night. <laughs> oh, my God. I know something my preacher got to get. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Who do we love? Come on, say everybody. Jesus. Every, everybody in Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. My God. That's going to be a crazy day. Lord, forgive me. See, some folks say eternity is a long time. <clears throat> eternity is not a long time. A hundred years is a long time. A thousand years is a really long time. A trillion years is an extremely long time. Eternity is forever, friend. My God, my God. And what would it profit a man to gain the whole world? and lose his own soul. What would it profit a woman to gain the whole world and lose her own soul? Because one day there will be a resurrection. Somebody said, destroy eternity. Somebody said, listen, take the fastest flying bird you can find. Take a hummingbird. That little fella could be going back and forth. And take a hummingbird down by to, to, to the Sahara Desert. And Mr. Hummingbird, you got to take one grain of sand to the moon and back. Just one grain. And once you're taking one grain, Come back and get another grain until all of the Sahara Desert has been picked of sand. And then go around the world and find every beach in all the world and do the same thing. One grain of sand until it's all gone. And you fly back and forth. You fly back and forth. You fly back and forth. Once that bird has gotten every grain of sand off of planet Earth, eternity has just barely started. My God! Hallelujah! One man described it this way. It is utterly foolish. He said it is utterly foolish to, to abandon the glory of eternal heaven for a few moments of pleasure here on earth. Man, that, that, that I'm telling you, I know it tastes good after a good meal. And you smoke you some good one. You smoke some good one. Listen, you want to eat up everything. It goes down, just that chorus go down so nice and cool once it's cool. But is it worth it? My God! <laughs> he says it's utterly foolish to abandon the glories of eternal heaven for the pleasures of a few years here on earth. Is that all right, woman of God? I look at it like Moses there in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 24. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughters. When he came to years, he realized, I'm a Hebrew, I'm a Hebrew, I'm not an Egyptian. He refused to be called an Egyptian. He just did. Moses said, listen, man, I would rather go out and suffer slavery. I would rather suffer affliction. I would rather be a slave than to be in the palace. The, the life of believers are going to judge us at that day. 
the life and the sacrifice of other human beings is going to judge us at that day. The righteousness of God doesn't have to stand. Listen, my God, don't you know if the righteousness of human convict you, if the righteousness of human convict you, what the righteousness of God is going to do? If the good acts and the faithfulness and the sacrifice of natural men bring you to shame, what is the righteousness of God going to do at that day towards you? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Hello, somebody. If you can't even, if listen, if, if, if you got sinners living, you got, if you got atheists living better than you, what chance do you have standing in front of Almighty, Holy, Righteous God? Woo! That's going to be a resurrection. Either the Bible is telling the truth or the Bible is a lie. It's a fairy tale. We just need to use it as paper. Use it as toilet paper. Or, or, or it is the word of God. Which one is it? Word of God. My God, my God. He doesn't love a brother or sister more than me. It's not worth it to me. He doesn't love a mama, daddy more than me. It's not worth it to me. He doesn't love himself. He doesn't love his wife. She doesn't love her husband more than me. It's not worthy of me. There's a resurrection coming, y'all. How does that My God. Okay, so many and many of them that sleep in the dust, who glory, of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting content. Now watch this here now. Verse 3. Daniel chapter 12 and 3. And they that be wise, they that be what? Wise. Shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, firmament or the heavens. And they that turn men to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Is that all right? My God, Jesus. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 13. Jesus is risen, risen from the dead. And because he's alive, we are alive also. What page are on First Thessalonians 4, 13? 1288. 1288. And because he's alive, my God, we are alive. Because he lives, we shall live also. First Thessalonians verse, chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Come on, say resurrection. <laughs> that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. There are some folks right now that is so sad. Listen, friend. Who are the others who have no hope? Those who died in their sins. It's not a joke or game. It's not a joke or game. Listen, I know sometimes we go to funerals and if we go to some funerals, and everybody, have you ever heard anybody when you went to a funeral, they put anybody in hell? When they read the obituary, they gave their, Christ, gave their life to a Christ at an early age. Everybody go to hell. Everybody go to hell. Drunkards, liars, thieves, adulterers, fornicators, homosexuals, lesbians, everybody go to hell when you go to a funeral. But according to the Bible, there's some folks who are, who are dead who have no hope. There are some who are dead who have hope, and there are some who are dead who have what? No. Let me read that again. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are dead asleep, that ye sorrow not. Don't be sorrowful, even as others which have no hope. Hello? And then we got some of these false religions. These false denominations, false the Mormons are false one, the Jehovah's Witness is false one, the Seven Day of Venice is really teetering, teetering, teetering on being false. Very, very strongly false. Uh, I, I would call it false. If you say, if, if you were saved, if, 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 you, if you worship on a Sunday, you ain't saved, you're, you got a, you're teaching a false doctrine. If you say if you can't eat certain foods, you're teaching a false doctrine. If you say I'm going to go to hell because I, because I don't worship on a, on a Sabbath day, the last day of the week, if you say I'm going to hell because of that, you are teaching a false doctrine. So seven day Adventist, if you're teaching that, if you're believing that, you're going to hell. Catholics, you're praying to Mary, you're going to hell. There ain't much, but there's only one mediator between God and man. There is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Mary is not a mediatrix. Mary was a sinner just like every other sinner. How do you know that man of God? Because she called God her Savior. Who needs a Savior but somebody's in danger? Mary was in danger.